Let's go ahead and bring up your um, Engate startup tool. The folks at Engate uh, recommend that you make use of this tool. Uh, it does simplify the complexity uh, of configuration options for the deployment of a border controller, and uh, it's a very useful tool. It'll get you up and, and running very quickly, and it's the preferred solution. There are so many options in SIP, as you'll see when we look at the WID web interface. You just want to get this box up and then worry about fine-tuning it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Um, the first time that you use the box, it will actually come up and look something like this. And you'll put in your MAC address, you'll put in an IP address, give it a password, select your um, interface on your PC, and keep in mind at the time you take the, the in-gate out of its shipping container, it doesn't have an IP address. Uh, so this tool uh, needs to be installed on the same subnet as the box so that it can use uh, actually communicate with the box um, magic ping uh, MAC address to go assign it an IP address. So I've already been in this box. I'm going to say uh, change or update this unit. Go ahead and put in my password contact the box. And at this point, <clears throat> we're inside the box here. Um, the first decision you have to make is where will the separator be residing in your deployment? There are several ways to do it. I have my uh, prejudice, which I'll share with you, but there are a variety of options here. So <clears throat> you can either make the separator the firewall in your deployment. So it will play the role of firewall. All devices will point to this uh, in gate as the default gateway. Uh, an excellent solution. Or you can <clears throat> make the in gate a separate default gateway for your SIP devices. Give it its own IP, public IP, and keep your existing firewall. Um, I don't encourage the use of these other configurations as uh, invariably what will happen is who's ever administering the firewall will make changes that negatively impact the SIP um, call processing and media flow. And it's, uh, it, it's an unnecessary level of complexity. Uh, again, this is something the network administration people need to uh, deal with, and I'll leave that choice to them. My personal prejudice, as I've said, is to either use the separator as the firewall, or in the case of this demo video, this video cheat sheet, we're going to set the in gate up as the uh, having its own public IP address, keeping the existing firewall in place, and basically, um, SIP devices will point here at the in gate for the default gateway and your data devices will point here at the existing firewall. So <clears throat> go ahead and set Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1. Ethernet 0 needs to be your local area network and interface Ethernet 1 wants to be your public IP address. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here get my subnet mask installed. Um, and since we're on the uh, internet here doing this uh, video presentation, I'm going to um, <clears throat> pause the video here while I go ahead and fill this stuff in, or I'll have every hacker on the internet looking to scan my SIP ports here, so stand by.
So now we're on the IP PBX uh, tab of the startup tool. And here you can select the PBX. As you can see, the good folks at um, Engate have uh, completed interoperability testing with a wide variety of different um, telephone systems. Um, <clears throat> you'll find the Shore Gear, Shortel Shore Gear on here. I'll go ahead and select that. What it wants here is the IP address, not of the Shore Gear PBX, but of the Shore Gear box that you have configured your uh, SIP trunks on. So it's uh, a common mistake for people to assume what they're looking for is the server IP address at the Shortel headquarters server, but you don't want to do that. You want to <coughs> configure uh, your Shore gear switch, know its IP address, and set up your SIP trunking on that box, and that's what you're going to put here. Uh, clearly, there's an implied um, limitation here. Uh, this is one switch IP in your startup tool, and therefore, depending on the size of your Shore gear switch, is going to determine how many trunks you could bring up. Uh, over here, uh, um, Shore gear SIP trunks do not authenticate. So that's lesson number one. My expectation is that, I don't know, version 13 of Shore Tunnel uh, possibly will have some type of uh, authentication. Here we don't use authentication. And typically, uh, in this configuration, you've got your in-gate talking to your uh, ITSP and your Shore Gear talking to your in-gate. So that's uh, that's what we call a back-to-back -back user. Uh, and there is a trust relationship between the uh, Shore Gear and the Engate anyway, so let's not sweat this uh, authentication at this time. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, then we'll configure the ITSP, your telephone company, and once again, Engate has um, created a range of carriers that they've uh, done some interoperability testing. Uh, I'm going to use one that is uh, going to be defined as generic, and it will require uh, a registration. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll put in my IP address. Uh, I'll put in maybe the start. Um, And um, this is not the IP address of the uh, <clears throat> ITSP I'm going to use. It's a uh, um, it's a um, actually the IP address of the CIA. So if you guys want to hack me, have fun. Um, at any rate, at this point, uh, we're going to say log in to the web GUI and apply settings. So when I hit this upload, there's going to be a um, message that pops up and says that we've successfully uploaded this. And at that time, it'll then take us over to the web interface. Whenever you hit the upload, <clears throat> configuration from the startup tool. It's going to take you to the web page. You log in. The default uh, username is admin. Whatever password uh, that you set in the startup tool is now the password to enter through the web administration. And the first thing you want to do is apply the configuration. And then you're going to need to save that configuration. And at that point, uh, you've completed uh, the necessary tasks to get your system uh, the basic configuration that it actually should be able to place and receive phone calls. Um, after that, you're going to be uh, fine-tuning uh, um, things like the quality of service. You'll want access to logging and tools, uh, which will enable you to do packet capture, uh, check your network, turn on your various logs, all very useful 
the um, the admin uh, portal can be a bit overwhelming if you've never uh, seen it before, and that's why the startup tool is so so important because it'll just get the uh, basic configuration data into your separator and enable you to begin making phone calls. If you're going to have more complex uh, configuration, for example, L to app or radius uh, integration, uh, these are things that you can do after you get your basic uh, SIP connection up and running. Uh, your, your network tools, uh, the various SIP services, <clears throat> take a look at your uh, actual trunks uh, it'll take you to your trunk page uh, uh, and you'll be able to see uh, the status of your SIP trunks. I'm purposely moving it around because I don't want you to focus on my IP addresses. Um, but at the end of the day, those are the minimum requirements for getting a in-gate separator up in running with uh, shore gear it's really um, very easy to do at least the basic configuration getting the basic uh, um, uh, trunk defined in the shore tell connected to the in gate from the in gate to your tsp um, the configuration is very straightforward and after you have that up and running then we can drill down on some of the other aspects of the config configuration using the Engate Separator web interface. I hope you have found this uh, informative and I thank you for viewing.